sometimes the like a 30 minute it, it'll stop after 30 minutes uh, okay okay sure sure that'll be fine i uh, really appreciate you coming on um and yeah i just wanted to have like a creative discussion with you basically uh it's just gonna be super chill just gonna ask you some questions hopefully it doesn't feel like an interview but so I guess the first thing I wanted to ask you was what was your journey like becoming a full-time freelance photographer? Like, was it was it difficult for you? Um, yeah, I think in hindsight, it 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 was difficult. Um, I think you know, which I'm sure you know at this point too. But it's it's so much of the unknown, and you know, I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't intend on doing it full time. Um, it, it, yeah, it just, it was a hobby, um, that turned into, you know, a profession, but I, yeah, for me, I don't think it was something that I never, <clears throat> I never intended it to be something that was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I think as I, as I did it and the more I just practiced, the, the more I fell in love with it. And I think it was more that aspect of it the the <clears throat> the love for it and the joy that I found in it that motivated me to like stick to it as opposed to you know it being a business choice you know to start off with I remember you saying that you went for uber for a bit just to like try and make ends meet and then you had to work out how to make like double the income right from your photography and that's that's crazy pressure man that's crazy pressure it was a lot of pressure it, it was I mean you know <clears throat> I left a nine to five essentially um you know 40 hours a week i was i left that to then double the amount of hours i was working you know essentially i, I really i think i was working about 80 hours a week um like you said yeah i was driving uber um i was uh picking up odd stuff here and there i, I was doing a lot of contract work for different churches and so um, it, it was just all over the place. And so, you know, and obviously with photography, it's a three-part job, right? You have to find the work, <laughs> which is work. And then you have to do the work. And then there's post-processing. So you have to um, take that all into account, you know? So it just takes up a lot of time. And, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it was a lot. It was a lot. It wasn't like some easy easy like sit around and wait and people reach out to you kind of thing so it's crazy how much work goes unknown right yeah and like a lot of people think you know you're a freelance photographer and videographer it's such a cool job you must be on a high like all the time right? it's misleading i think and they're um and, and i actually think that that what you mentioned there is it might be um one of the main reasons people actually find it harder than it is technically because you go in with an expectation of oh this is cool um, I can do it and you're you hit the wall of reality that says no you actually you know you actually have to um, do all these other things and, and fit all these other pieces into the process in order to make it viable and so, so there's a reality check that happens there at some point where, you know, <laughs> you, yeah, you have to face the reality of, oh, I'm, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. And you have to work on that in quiet, you know, on your own. And yeah. it's, yeah. it's not a showboaty thing. You actually have to um, uh, humble yourself and, mm -hmm. and call out, you know, where you are you know, in reality and just accept that for what it is and say, okay, like time, time, uh, partnered with, you know, the actual, um, execution of practice and learning and all of those things is what's going to, you know, unlock the door for, for actual, you know, possibilities. But yeah, it's, it, it is such an attractive looking job and, you know, oh, you get to, travel around and do this and like it just seems like you know, it just seems like it's a dream and so um so and that's all that we see on the other side of it right we see people traveling around taking photos of pretty places and um and yeah and then and then you're like oh i'll do that too 
So yeah, that's that's the hard reality check of um, you know it's not like that. I mentioned it in my most recent video, which is: Do you still struggle with imposter syndrome being creative? Because obviously you've done it for like how long, like six, seven years now. The the best way to tackle imposter syndrome is to um, avoid comparison and to really put your head down and focus on what you're doing and what your ability is. And as long as you are in a position of, hey, I'm never gonna stop learning and I'm never gonna stop um, trying to glean information from other people or um, you know, c circumstances, as long as you're in that position, I think it does help eliminate the kind of crippling symptoms of uh, imposter syndrome because um, your, I think imposter syndrome has to have some kind of connection to comparison, right? Because you are saying, well, I'm not as good as this person or I'm not where, you know, whatever. Um, you know, at this point, like, it doesn't really matter to me. Like, I'm not, I'm not c trying to compare myself to anyone, which it's obviously easier said than done, but it, it, it is, it is true. Like, I, um, most of my, like, inspiration comes from anything but photography, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that helps with that because I'm like, I'm not comparing myself to this person. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, on, on top of that, uh, discussing about your inspiration, I was quite curious as to whether you have any favorite photographers and if you could list three, that would be great. Um, for me, you're one of them. And then nice. it's probably, Nirav Patel as well. Yeah, yeah, he's up there. Um, and then maybe Tyler Mitchell. Wow, okay, great taste. Yeah, Tyler Mitchell's up there for me. Um, I think especially when it comes to the editorial world. Um, he, he just, it's funny, for a long time I was just looking at like tones and colors and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's great. Um, but he's someone who, once I first discovered him, um, I almost like forgot about tones and colors and I just was so captivated by his, his staging and framing and, um, composition. Um, and just, he, he took kind of the editorial, um, concept and, uh, just really elevated it in a way that was, you know, I mean, to me, it's just, it's, it's, very, it's no different than, um, you know, paintings that really suck me in, you know, I think that his work is just like, you just want to, you stare at it and you're like, wow, everything, it feels like everything is so meticulously placed um, that it, there's no way it could have been an accident, you know, it's the furthest from candid, I think, that you could get. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I love, I love his work. Honestly, I mean, yeah, I think what you mentioned, those guys are amazing. Um, yeah, photographers, um, I, I do remember like, you know, Garrett King, like short stash, you know, a while ago, he, he was someone who I felt like was kind of, he always has felt like someone who, who was, yeah, kind of pioneering things. Like he was doing stuff and then everyone copied him and then he took a sharp left and then, you know, everyone would copy him. And so, um, I, I appreciate his, um, sort of the biggest thing I appreciate about him is that he, really established his own aesthetic and his look and stuck to it. Um, and I think it really separated the wheat from the chaff in, in other photographers because, you know, if you're one of those people who are like, oh, I'm going to go copy him, which, you know, early days I totally was. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go try to try to make my photos look like him. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I think, I think that definitely was like a... Um, uh, yeah, an inspiration, but more more to do with his approach to it and and how true to himself he was in that. I think it's quite, especially with social media nowadays, it's like so easy to just go and copy photographers, right? And I think that's why it's so hard to try and find your own style and to develop yeah. that. But as you mentioned, it takes a lot of time. It might take 10,000 hours or more, right? So um, with that, I guess, do you have any like tips for people starting out photography, trying to discover their own style and everything. Cause I think at the moment there's that really, um, it's either like, cause, cause what I've seen on Instagram is like, it's either cinematic 
always like warm tones. Circling back to what you were talking about with like, you know, stylistic, finding your voice and, you know, that, that really is, and I think we've talked about this earlier when I was in the UK, not just the importance of finding your voice, but um, the structures that you need to have in your life to be able to support that, um, that decision and that commitment to it. There is a large portion of people who I think desperately want to find their voice in the craft that they are passionate to um, or passionate about, um, who feel like they are having to choose between, you know, their their form of expression and what the world will deem, you know, fit. I think when it comes to identifying your own style, which I want to sort of almost rephrase that and say, like, your own voice, like, what is your voice? And I'm, I'm going to sort of condense this just to photographers, I guess, right, yeah. since that's kind of what we are. Yeah. But in terms of photography, like, you know, understand that, like, the things that you take photos of are are a subconscious at least reflection of like what you know what you are and like you know it, it's showcasing what you're drawn to it's showcasing where you find beauty where you find um where your attention goes right and so um being mindful of that and being being aware of the process like like you know verbalize the process it's, it's almost like being a creative you, we, we almost have like an identity crisis because we're almost into so many different things right yeah like you mentioned you you did music for a long time now you're doing photography and then you're into video as well and i'm sure so many other creative things uh, yeah. so it's like how did you know that you wanted to go into photography yeah, I think you talked about this too, but you were talking about how you have all these different avenues too, right? Because like there's mm -hmm. YouTube, there's, um, you know, photography, there's fashion, there's all these different things. Uh, so I, I think I understand the, the concept of feeling like you can't do all, of, there's no way you can do all of those things. So you got to pick one, which sounds like, you know, what our parents would maybe say to us, you know, pick one, like pick one thing and like stick to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, I think with that, there's probably a sense of, um, yeah, you, you, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, right? There's no in between. Like you can't be amazing at all of those things, surely. So you should just pick one thing and stick to it. Well, I, I, in a sense, I agree. In a sense, I think that you have to find, you know, a lane that you can occupy and, and do it excellently. Like, you know, um, and, you know, I, I'm sure depending on the person, you know, that lane is probably a lot narrower than maybe some other people. But like, but for me, yeah, like I'm not, I'm not necessarily, um, I'm not necessarily like planning on going and becoming a musician or like doing all these other things. Like I have really kind of picked a lane, but I, what I will say to that is that I think it's really important to, um, not just say your lane is photography, because I don't think that that is necessary. I think I think what's what a better question might be is like, well, what, um, especially when you're breaching into sort of the how to make this a sustainable living kind of thing. What is it that you bring to the table that is a, that is a solution for someone else? You know, obviously, you know, and I, I was sort of naive enough to think, well, photo and video are kind of the same thing. So let's just do both those things. Not the same thing at all. So, I, you know, I've spent a couple of years just like focused on video and um, I'm trying to be sufficient in that and still learning, you know, a ton about it. Um, but uh, I think that they're the the principles are still the same, you know, with what I'm trying to do is like my, my heart is to tell stories. My heart is to um, unearth things that a lot of other things can't showcase you know so through photo and video and um a lot of that the the mediums in that there there is always an opportunity to tell a story and so you know um i think as long as it that's for me that feels like my lane like if i can help tell a story so then now i'm kind of like well you know brand work um i really try to work with clients that want that same thing going back to like taste right like yes we want the more storytelling approach not just hey take a photo of our product mm -hmm. um so if if every if anything aligns with that part of it then great you know i'm i'm your guy 
And so um, I would say when it comes to picking something, you don't have to pick necessarily, you know, the object that you are, that's in your hand, that's going to, you know, that you're going to do the work with, but pick something that aligns with, you know, your heart and your vision for, you know, almost like your, you know, your calling, your purpose, right? Um, it's a matter of understanding what role each of those things play and, and, embodying all those things and embracing those things and almost like packaging it in a way that makes sense to other people. I want to thank you so much for coming on and it was great talking to you, man. That's it. All right, thanks so much, man. Wonderful talking to you, man. Yeah, yeah, you too, you too.